is God's idea. It never came from the idea of man. The Bible says, and the man was alone. He did not have anyone. He couldn't find a partner amidst everything God created. And he sat down. God now thought of it and said, okay, let me do something for the man. You know what? He made the man to sleep. When the man fell asleep, he brought a woman from the bone of his side. Cre after creating the woman, he put the woman where the man will see the woman. And as the man sighted the woman, the man screamed, this surely is the bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. You know, that was where marriage started from. And when God saw that they could click, God, the Bible says, and God blessed them. You know, that God uh, orchestrated marriage does not mean that marriage cannot crash. Marriages are crashing, crashing among unbelievers, crashing among believers, even crashing among ministers of the gospel. Now, it shows us that what makes marriage to crash has no respect for any title. Listen, I always tell people, when they ask me, Pastor, what has been keeping you going for 20 years plus? I always tell them one thing, that the way your car needs maintenance, marriage also needs maintenance. The way you say, I'm going to Lagos, and you won't face a jaw or, or your road, you know, that is the way you must find the way if marriage will work. I always tell them, I have a philosophy, that no matter how fast a man runs in the wrong direction, listen, his destination will become a, 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 you know, a dream that he cannot attain. Please take note of this. I will only speak on three things, and I will go straight to signing of register, thanksgiving, and we march straight to the reception. What, I'm speaking on a brief topic, what makes the minister's marriage to work? You know why I want to talk about the minister's marriage? And I will generalize it too. It's because, my sister, I asked your pastor, we spoke on phone. He told me that you actually played a very big role in the youth department of your church. Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. And, okay, she's a youth president. Can we celebrate God better? Yes. Hallelujah. And you are getting married to a minister, minister. You know, just like when I was to get married to my wife, she was a minister already. You know, I was a general overseer when we got married. And it has worked. What makes marriage to work? Let's rush it quickly. Number one, it begins with getting the right, sorry, getting it right at the foundation. Now, this one has nothing to do with them again. They have gone through foundational stage. I want to say this one because of the youths. And if you are there, you are struggling with your marriage. Maybe you didn't get it right at the foundation. Now, ma for marriage to have a strong structure, you must get it right at the foundation. It begins with getting it right at the foundation. And how do I know this? Exodus chapter 2 verse 1. The Bible talks about it in Exodus chapter 2 verse 1. It said, there, and there went a man of the house of Levi. Look at it. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took wife of a daughter of Levi. A Levite got married to a Levite. Now, a Levite did not marry a Benjamite. A Levite did not marry from the tribe of Naphtali. The Levite went to a Levite. It means that it takes the combination of two born-again Christians coming together to form a home for a home to last. You must get it right. Listen, in getting married, don't go for the other things that people look at. Ah, woman, wow, kuni, to lo, gon, to jeke, ah, woman, woman, man, ali, ma, told you me. Listen, I have seen marriage, uh, uh, rich people married and their marriage crash. I've seen that. 23 years of pastoring this church. 27 years of being a pastor, a full-time pastor. I have seen, I've canceled, handled cases. Riches does not sustain homes. I have seen it. I've seen where a woman was telling her husband, it is you I want, I don't want your money. I have seen that. I have seen people who have gone into marriage to say, ah, that guy is handsome. That lady is beautiful. All these things will fade. It must be a Levite coming to get married to a Levite. Hello? Now look at their combination now. A youth president coming to, give, to get married to a minister. Now, when I was getting married, 
I was a pastor. My wife was also already in the ministry. We came together as ministers coming together. If you don't get it right at the foundation, it's a pity that today's generation, we go for the wrong things. Today's generation want to look at the size and the shape of the woman. Ah, she park her it will come down ah, it, it, the, the woman wants to say I want, I want a guy oh this guy this guy is very uh, he has a teddy if you see him he's huge he's tall all those things are not necessary in our tribe I'm a Yoruba man we used to say you must get it right at the foundation that's why I see, both of you, as you have met yourself in, the, in Christ, help each other to protect your relationship with God. Now, when I, when I got married with, to my wife, the way I pray is even from the way she prays. I can't pray sitting down. So, we now come together and summarize. And she cannot pray walking around. So if I decide to say, ah, I must force you to follow my style, I will kill her prayer life. If she forced me to follow her style, she will kill my prayer life. Now, my own study life is even from hers. Hello, somebody, am I communicating? So what we did is to help ourselves to maintain ourselves' relationship with God. Maintain it. A Levite coming to get married to a Levite. If you look at the history of this family I mentioned in Exodus 2 1, they are the ones that gave birth to the three most popular children. They gave birth to Aaron, they gave birth to Miriam, and they gave birth to Moses. The three of children they gave birth to were instruments in God's hands. So for everyone listening to me, if you didn't get it right in the foundation, you can't get the marriage results that we are talking about. If you didn't get it right at the foundation, you took your wife from a disco party. You took your husband from a, a political meeting. Hello, campaign. No, no, no. Christy, you know, I didn't hear you now. So choose rightly. Now let's now go to the number two that will work for you. Listen, marriage works. When the husband and wife understand their individual biblical roles, when the husband and wife understand their individual biblical roles, sharing to man yaki marriage is she share ni pe ti o ko ati yawo ti o ye oju she won ti bibeli we to to ba ye won tan de in she. That's what we call biblical roles for husband, biblical roles for wife. Let's look at it from the Bible. Ephesians chapter 5, 22 to 31. We are going to look at it. There's biblical rules. There's biblical rules. One of the things that have sustained my marriage till tomorrow is this. I was praying one day after my marriage and I had the Lord said to me, say, son, see marriage as a true life stage drama where you cannot afford to make a mistake. You are given a script. Follow your script. And don't bother yourself about the script of your partner. And I said, Lord, what is my script? Show me the scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. The Bible says this. Look at this. Wives, do what? Submit yourself unto your own husband. And look at the measure of submission. It says, as unto the Lord. The measure of submission is as unto the Lord. The Bible even gave us a measure. Haven't you seen women in church? They can kneel down for their pastor, Ekaroma, Ekaroma, Daddy, 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 but in their husband, they cannot. If they want to serve their pastor food, they will look for the best dish at home. But at all, at, you know, and when it is time for them to serve their they won't even serve their husband. You will just hear about and call you in the kitchen. Serve me now. The Bible says the same way you want, you are to serve God. So which means that the greatest food of man is not rice. The greatest food of a man is not beans. The greatest food of a man, sister for me, is not pounded yam. The greatest food of a man is honor. <laughs> I didn't say you should preach to her. 
She can hear me. It's honor. This is my wife of 20 years plus. We've had misunderstandings. But she has never used a degrading word on me before. Unto the Lord. The same way you honor God. You don't know that. Listen. listen. What water is to fish is what honor is to man. You wonder why you see some big daddies in the Senate running after some small, small girls. Those girls will be calling them daddy, daddy, sweetheart. Okay, what do you want me to prepare for you? Because the wives at home does not show respect at all. Look at the scripture. That's what the Bible is saying. That's gateway to a marriage you will enjoy. Show me the scripture. Show me the scripture. I don't have all the time. Look at the mail. We are, no, we are still in 22. We are still in 22. We are still in 22. Come fast. So wives submit. Every wife that is here, see, the gateway to your husband's house is honor. Gateway to your husband's heart is what? Honor. Submit unto your so wife submit yourself unto your, your own husband as unto the Lord. In fact, the scripture even categorizes it unto your own husband. That honor you are giving to your pastor, take it back home. That honor you are giving to your boss, take it back home. That honor you are giving to your father, take it back home. Now, let's move to verse 23. He now said to the man, look at the biblical roles. He said, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body, who is the head of every home, the man. Every new year like this, my wife and children will come before me and ask, daddy, where are we going this year? It is my responsibility to seek the face of God, to know the direction of where, where we are going, to know what next to do. That's why, listen, if you don't give your husband, all the women that are here, the right to lead, you just know that he's not happy. And you will not know why he's not happy. Give him the right to live. That's why I always tell every woman, wherever your husband is worshipping, that's where you must worship. Yes, because it's the head. He was told about the Jew as a Christian. Told love him, Muslim. Why do you want to say that? Oh, Tony, it's your head. Oh, like you are saying, oh, love him, oh, Lotti, oh, Wanki, oh, Wanya. And about those who are not watching, he was not ruling. He was not for juicy. You need to fair. Show me back that scripture. We don't have time. I don't need my face. I want the scripture. For the husband is the head. Of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is a savior of, our, of, of the body. Now, show me the next verse. Move on. Move on. Shagadavas. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, Sister Fumi, can you hear? So let the wives be to their own husband. In what? In what? In everything. I always read the Bible to the letters. In everything submit in everything what does it mean to submit wait for his permission in everything you seek his consent in everything you recognize him as your head in everything you recognize him as the authority over you there are some things you used to discuss with your mom directly before but now that you are married you have an authority over your head and I've trained them very well. They know I've taught them. You don't get married and throw away your in-laws. They know I've taught them. My, my, mother, my wife's mother of blessed memory was, I was the closest to her heart. She's the last born too. She spent most of her time in my house. When mama died, eh? Bishop, hear me. When mama died, they could not find a picture for obituary. I had to give them from the one I took. So, you don't say, ah, now I'm married to Fumi. Ah, ah, oh, Fumi, I'm the head of this house. In this house, no in love. I even trust you. 
Next verse. Let's go on. Fast, 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 fast. Now, to summarize with wives, did you hear me now? What is the instruction of God? What's your biblical role? Submission. Now, to the man, he now said, husband, minister, here, yeah. love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Wait. It means that the role of the man in marriage is to love to the point of death. You must be willing to love for me to the point that you, you can even die for her. Because the Bible says we should love as Jesus loved the church and died. I was telling them in church yesterday, God forbid, if I'm Robert, should enter the house and say, we are going to kill somebody in this house. Who should surrender? Let the man say, leave my wife, I love her. Kilo Shelley. Ah. <laughs> That's the kind of love that makes marriage to work. Love to the point, I say, show me the scripture. Husband, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and did what? And gave. Wait, wait, wait. Before you put himself, and gave. It shows us that the number one proof of love is what? Is giving. Minister, anything you cannot give your wife, don't give any other person. Because the number one proof of love is giving. The number one proof of love is giving. Ask my ministers, they will tell you yourself, no. 20 years plus, Simoti Mari, me, Udara, and Konfon Ramiri. If I want to take yogurt, my wife also must take yogurt. I don't buy one thing, I buy two. If I want to eat, my wife must want to eat. If I want to buy shoe, my wife wants shoe. She won't ask me. Because the number one proof of love is giving. When it is like this, marriage will work. Show me the next verse. Fast, 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 fast. Let's go. Look at that. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Let's move on. 27. He gave himself that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. Can you see? He gave himself. So that all these things can be accomplished. Next verse. We are stopping at 33. Next verse. Move, 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 move. So ought men to love their wives as how? Their own body. Excuse me, look up. Have you ever seen a normal woman being who begins to punch himself? Now, what do you call people that punch themselves? I didn't hear you. I can't hear you. Shout it aloud mad person so any man that beats his wife who is he you didn't talk now are you afraid I give you permission to talk any man that beats his wife he say if a man beats his wife who is he shout mad man so that if there is any wife bitter here he will be knowing that he needs to visit a psychiatric hospital any man that beats his wife is what He's a madman. Because for marriage to work, he said he had to, he ought, man ought to love his wife as their own body. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. How can you say you love your wife and you are beating her? He said he that loveth his wife, loveth himself. In fact, sir, there is no how you can have peace if you don't love your wife. Quickly, let's finish this scripture. Quickly. Number three. Okay, the next one. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, even as the Lord the church. So if you love your wife, you must nourish and cherish her. 30. For we are all members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Let's finish it. 31. For this case, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Let's leave that one for now. Third thing I want to speak on. So don't forget, what's point number two? For marriage to work, you must understand your individual biblical role. What's the role of the wife? Submission. What's the role of the man? Love. Who is to show love? The man. Who is to show submission? 
the woman. Number three, the wife of the minister. For the wife of the minister, it is important you develop interest. Leave this man for now. Bishop, leave him for now. It is important you develop interest in his assignment. Or else, listen, you will either be irritated, feel jealousy, jealous, or begin to feel that you don't have attention. Ministry, look up, my sister, demands a lot of things. I took my time, I was studying the Bible when I was preparing for this message. I was looking for servants of God in the Bible whose wives were relevant with them in ministry. I started from Genesis. Beloved, I couldn't find. Until I got to Acts of the Apostles where I saw Aquila and Priscilla. The great Moses, his wife was not relevant in ministry. The great Samuel, his wife was not relevant in ministry. The great prophet Elijah, we didn't even know whether he had a wife. Prophet Elisha, ah, God. Apostle Paul that made great record. Did he marry? So while I was busy trying to say, maybe I should conclude that maybe women are not relevant in ministry. I saw Aquila. And his wife Priscilla. Every time they were going for missionary work, they were together. Madam, you will see women that he will cancel. Don't feel jealous. Because we are fathers to a lot of women. Ask my wife of 20 something years. Several counselings. There are times we want to put our heads on the bed. It will be a call for an important prayer. At times we have to leave the home. At times we'll be engaged on the phone. Praying and praying and counseling to save somebody's life. It does not mean we don't love you. You know how my wife succeeded to do it? You know I met her in ministry. She now started to love my own assignments more. She even dropped her own assignment to build my assignment. I'm always in church, so you will see her in church with me. Did you hear me? Love is assignment. Don't see his assignment as hindrance to your union. And no matter, listen, who any woman is, they cannot be your husband's wife. Believe in the place that God has given you. Don't let them make you feel jealous. Don't, make them, don't let them make you feel inferior. Yes, ma. At the white church, like in those days, 20 something years ago, Usasho. And you know how you women used to do? Oh, we are old pastor. <laughs> But because we know who has called us, things began to change. Now, when you love this assignment, this God will reward you. My wife was busy taking care of the altar here. She's in charge of these decorations. When God said to her, Yeah, Missy, I will give you a son. His name shall be so so and so. Write it down. And that time, we didn't have a boy. She didn't even tell me. So when she got pregnant the third time, we were going for a trust We didn't see anything. She was waiting for a confirmation of what God told her. Two weeks to delivery was when one young doctor saw it and said, Ah, uh-uh, ah, this is a boy. My wife ran back to the altar and said, You are a covenant-keeping God. Love the assignment. Then finally, this one is for both of you. When you have misunderstandings, there's no marriage without misunderstandings. When you have misunderstandings, you must learn to resolve it peacefully. When you have misunderstandings, you must what? Learn to resolve your misunderstandings peacefully. 
There are four ways, four don'ts I will show you. Don't do these four things. Number one, don't believe in the power of applying force to get peace. That's the number one don't of resolving crisis. Ah, no, if I don't shout at her, if I don't lock his shirt, he won't leave me. When I talk, people think I'm boasting. 20 years plus, my wife has never stood at the entrance to face, to stand in front of me before. Not to talk about locking my shirt. Say, oh, oh, Nero, you won't go until we settle this. Don't believe in the application of force to achieve peace. Two, don't believe that until a third party comes in, you cannot have peace. That's the second don't. No, 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 no. Yao Mire, I bata wa ti e mari. E bi o fo wo si. Toro kere. I ba ya was 26. O un 20. Ma? 23. Family to de ti wa. I want to former governor of your state. Or lesson ya. Mission. Oni kalukuba da je bubu le ni straight. Yeah, me see. Yeah, me see. Yeah, me see. Ah. But her mom, yeah, won't lose so quick. Pastor, you wash out for queen bale. If you're right. Yeah, won't lung bawaju. Lung bay. On our wedding day, my in-laws came like guests. And to wash it and trust her. Wash it and trust her. Big bad to yake, Chibolo and Femarini. Chibolo and Femarini. Emma go. Tabani misunderstanding. Shan won't look at love at Josu. So, Kosono Lane. You didn't hear me. Sir? Yes, yeah, the bridge has been cut. Now listen. Aba Mario, Oba de Ruas, Ibitati, Tawangbe, three months after our marriage. Ah, Ru, listen. Kilo de Fa, Kisha came in off her married life plan. Best mammy, Iletongbe won't travel, won't transfer a lot for our court. Oh, and he came out with a ballet. It was in nine months. But our job wedding me, oh, go be in a watch when she yawe, Moa Bawi. Modern lipstick, Nibu Gwenwe. We shall look lipstick if right. Oh, kiss you, Benini. Mwa ba wi ba se n jo jade nu church hall lo ni em oro leti ajo agree on ko le bo si mo ah ibola wa lo ya o mi ni kilo sele mo ni ko si nkan mo ko so fun driver moto tire e sha ma gbe wa car kiri ki n fi ronu ibi ti ma lo If it had a check for the law manager, one day we were sitting after three months. My wife didn't go back home because there is no home to go back to. So for 20 years, there is no third party that came between us. Don't believe in settling your issues with the involvement of a third party. I won't come believe with the Tarata, but that's your own. I won't call it you. Don't believe that. We are examples. No third party has ever come in to say to us. Even my mentor, Bishop Tai Wadilako, we only go for counseling and he will pray for us. Post that thing. Number three. Third don'ts. I'll stop at number four. Don't be centered on who should win in every misunderstanding. Are you hearing me? No matter what the misunderstanding, the issue is, it is not who wins that is important. Just arrive at peace. 
Like somebody was saying, Olo call to one finishing. Get to what you better, ja. I read Larry, and watch it. I better to be finishing here only. Oh, I live my jaja should never. Don't believe in that. Peace should be your what? Your focus. And lastly, don't use. malice as a tool to gain attention these are these are four things you must never allow don't use malice as a tool to gain attention i won't talk to you so that you will know that i'm angry with you no no matter what the issues is uh, issues are let's talk let's say to it I pray that the Lord that gave me peace will give you peace in marriage. Amen. The Lord that gave me children is the Lord God Almighty. He will give you children in marriage. Amen. Anytime I'm going home, ask my wife and children, they know my home is not a war, it's not a war zone. It's a peaceful place. I sleep well. That's how your home will be. It shall be a peaceful place. In Jesus' name. Are you blessed? Have you learned something? Go and apply it. <laughs>